This video is about how I use Soylent, the meal replacement drink. I want Soylent, the company, to do well, that might improve availability of products that I like. Soylent, and similar, engineered meal replacement products, are a good idea, but it's still a tiny niche market, compared to traditional foods. Soylent educated me about the usefulness of this product type. Now I want to help educate others, based on my own experience. When Soylent became available in Canada, about five years ago, I ordered a few boxes, thinking it might be a good addition to my emergency kit, being a shelf stable, no preparation needed, source of complete nutrition. Of course, I had to test it, so I took it to work for my lunches, to replace the usual fast food. Well, the soil in is cheaper than fast food, much faster, and kept me more energized, to the point that I could very easily work a couple hours extra over time, making the soil and experiment actually profitable for me. Soylent raised my productivity. I could focus better and longer. So I kept a desk drawer full of Soylent and drank a bottle whenever hunger became a distraction. It's fiendishly efficient. One 400 milliliters bottle fills me up in minutes. I alternate the Soylent with similar volumes of plain old water because Soylent by itself does not provide enough low calorie hydration over time, I tried all the available soil and flavors of the drinks and the powder. They're all good. I'm not too fussy about food as long as it works. I don't live to eat. I eat to live. About 1,600 calories total is quite sustainable for me. Any more than that makes me gain weight. I'm somewhat sedentary by occupation and by nature. A more active person would need a few more calories per day. I'm retired now and drink about two bottles of Soylent per day. Basically it's no fast breakfast and lunch when I'm by myself. I eat the traditional labor intensive food for dinners with my wife, family, or friends. I like the no brainer convenience of Soylent and I want to turn over my emergency food stock every few months. So two bottles or meals per day of soil and is working well for me. I have storage space for at least a month of emergency food in case I have to quarantine or if there is a big earthquake or flood or something else that disrupts the supply chains or knocks out the utilities and prevents preparation of traditional food. Soil and other meal replacements have near zero overheads. You don't really need a fridge or stove or microwave. The ready to drink meal replacements contain about half the water that you need per day. So I store lots of bottled emergency drinking water too, plus water filters and sterilizers for extended emergencies. I switch between using powdered soil and, and the ready to drink bottles, depending on the best before dates in my stockpile. The powdered soil in is cheaper and stores about three times more densely, but the bottled variety is more reliable for emergencies. I have an ongoing subscription to receive two boxes twice per month. It gets delivered by Canada Post. This refreshes my stock at about the same rate that I consume it. By the way, once per month shipments were arriving in back breaking big heavy boxes. So I switched to more frequent smaller shipments that came in smaller lighter boxes. I also keep several bottles in my car in case I need food in a prolonged emergency away from home. This also enables quick and easy impromptu picnics. Now, I'll show you how I mix up a two liter jug of soil and from powder. I have an evolved routine to minimize the total work. I received this two liter jug from the soil and company about five years ago. It's looking a bit old now, but still works very well. I run it through my dishwasher as needed to keep it clean. I recommend any large 
transparent, tightly sealable jug that you can shake to mix. First, I put roughly a few teaspoons of instant coffee into the empty jug. I add about a cup of hot water, then mix it. Instant coffee dissolves much better into hot water than into mixed soylent. Even when I don't add any instant coffee, I still start with some water in the jug to prevent the soil and powder from clumping at the bottom. Next, I snip a tiny hole into the top of the soil and powder pouch to let some air in so I can settle the powder down below where I'm going to cut open the pouch. I cut the pouch, then carefully dump the powder into the jug, trying not to get it all over the kitchen or myself. You don't want to be absent-minded at this step. Then, I vigorously pour my filtered water into the jug, trying to maximize wetting of the powder, especially along the inside walls of the jug. Faster is better, to minimize clumps. Get the lid on quick, then start shaking. I shake until there is no dry powder visible, then a couple minutes extra. Then I pour in more water to finish filling the jug to the top, shake some more, then put it in the fridge until breakfast tomorrow, unless I'm hungry now.
This two liter jug is equivalent to five 400 milliliters bottles of soil and drink. For me, that's coffee, breakfast, and lunch for at least two days. During hot weather, I prefer cold soiling from the fridge. During cold weather, I'll heat the soiling in the microwave. I usually use this extra large mug that holds 400 milliliters, other times a regular sized mug, or drink direct from a ready to drink bottle. Room temperature is fine too. Soiling is fine all by itself. A bottle is a full meal that stops hunger for a few hours. But it also goes well with my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookies or other small treats. Long ago, before I learned about soil and, and other engineered meal replacements, I was somewhat concerned about getting proper nutrition. I spent time reading magazine articles about healthy food. I read nutrition labels on food packages. I put some effort into getting diversity into my diet so that I would get enough of the good nutrients and not too many of the bad ones. But after discovering Soylent and later some competing products and trying them and being very satisfied by them, I found it somewhat ludicrous to be reading nutrition labels and fussing about proper nutrition when I could just outsource all that hassle by buying the meal replacements. Now my health seems better, my weight is easy to manage, I rarely get food cravings or nagging hunger, and I spend much less time hassling with food or post-meal cleanup. Now if I read a nutrition label on some other food product, I notice all the zeros are missing nutrients. Then I remember the satisfaction I feel after every quick, easy soilent meal. It's changed my perception of food quite a lot, like it's now a solved problem. Soylent has raised my standards for food. I still like occasional fine dining for the sensory experience and socializing. But for routine meal soilent is now my no-brainer preferred choice. I do have a preference for Soylent over various other competing meal replacements that I have tried. Soylent has a more savory, less sweet taste that I myself prefer. And I quite like the Soylent Cafe Mocha variety for my daily caffeine. And the powdered Soylent is very efficient from multiple points of view. But I do often purchase competing products such as Insure or Blues when I see them on sale locally. Those are more widely available and often have best before dates farther out than most of the soil and that I receive by mail order. 
If you are looking to stock an emergency kit, pay attention to best before dates and also to portion sizes. Smaller people might prefer the smaller bottle sizes of certain brands. Some of them might have allergens. Read the labels. So by now, I have told you most of what matters to me about Soylent. I think many people could benefit from this category of food product, but they will need to test it first. Like many previously unfamiliar food products, it might be an acquired taste. Imagine if you had never drunk milk in your whole life, then someone offers you some. Drink liquid from an animal? Scary stuff. But Soylent is all plant-based, like running vegetables through a blender. Very mild, or even neutral, tasting. I was happy with Soylent since my first bottle, but I know a couple people who never finished their first bottle. I don't understand why. There are competing brands. Try a few and see if any might work for you. It's important to keep a supply of non-perishable food nearby for emergencies or supply chain disruptions. Long term, I am curious what brand's future astronauts will be drinking on Mars. Will Soylent be produced and consumed worldwide? Can genetic engineers get Soylent to grow on trees? Let's look forward to a great future. Cheers.